Oh, hello there. My name's Vicky and I'm from the Higgins Bedford Museum and Art Gallery. And I'm here today to tell you some tales about a very famous Bedford character. His name was Colonel Frederick Gustavus Burnaby. Have you heard of him? Well, in his time, he was said to be so famous that when Queen Victoria heard news of his death, she fainted. And here we have the great man himself in a beautiful portrait that you can see in the National Portrait Gallery in London. OK, are you ready for the stories? Frederick Gustavus Burnaby was born in 1842 in Bedford, the son of a vicar. He was very clever, had an adventurous nature, got bored very easily and so loved taking on challenges, especially if someone told him he couldn't do something. Burnaby joined the British Army and became an intelligence officer. He was six foot four inches tall, so that is nearly two metres in modern measurements. And he had a 48 inch chest, so that's well over a metre. A fantastic runner, boxer and swordsman, and said to be one of the strongest men in the army. Burnaby could break a horseshoe in half. He was so strong. <sighs> At a dinner party, if another guest was boring Burnaby, he had a trick of bending a fire poker around the person's neck to try to stop them from talking. Oh, I hope they hadn't been in the fire already or that would have been really hot. When working at Windsor Castle as a royal horse guard, some fellow army officers left a pair of Shetland ponies in his room for a joke. Everyone panicked when news came that the Queen was about to arrive and the ponies just wouldn't go down the stairs. Burnaby simply picked them up, one under each arm, and carried them downstairs. And here is a lovely cartoon by local illustrator David Litchfield. Once Burnaby was practising with a pistol at the shooting range behind Adkin and Sons gunmakers on the high street, when it exploded in his hand. He coolly walked down the high street to Dr Hurst's, had the wound stitched up and returned to the family home for lunch, without saying a word about the incident. Burnaby travelled the world and wrote stories all about his adventures. One day, he read in a newspaper that the Tsar of Russia had forbidden any foreign person from travelling through his country. Burnaby was very angry and decided there and then he would travel through Russia and during the blizzards of winter. He hired three gigantic camels, tied them to a tiny sleigh to pull him through the snowdrifts. It was so cold that his huge beard froze and snapped off and he nearly lost both his hands when he got frostbite. Burnaby managed to avoid all the Russian soldiers and eventually made it to the ancient city of Kiva, where no foreigner was meant to be. What do you think the first thing was that he went and did? He went and had a shave. It simply wouldn't do for an English gentleman to be seen walking around town looking such a hairy, scruffy mess. 300 fascinated Russians followed to watch him. They were all very confused because their tradition was to shave their heads and not their faces. Then the local ruler known as the Khan turned up. But instead of a big fight, the two men actually got on rather well together. His army boss in England, the Duke of Cambridge, wasn't happy though as Burnaby had disobeyed orders by going. Who's the Duke of Cambridge today? Do you know? Try and find out if you don't. Burnaby's story of his wild journey, a ride to Kiva, turned him into a huge celebrity. It sold out in all the bookshops and Queen Victoria invited him to dinner because he'd become so famous. The next year, in 1877, Burnaby became involved in the war between Russia and Turkey. 
he was given command of the 5th Turkish Brigade. Apparently, he went into one of the battles wearing a bowler hat. And I hope it fitted him better than it fits me. And he was also only armed with a huge stick. During the wars, someone tried to kill him by poisoning him with arsenic. But of course, it didn't work. But I'm afraid that is where we're going to have to leave it today. Join me again soon and I'll tell you more tales about Colonel Frederick Burnaby. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.